So there are a bunch of concepts we'll cover as part of the physical layer. This is the first in the series, but first let me see how much you remember and how good you are at solving riddles. So the role of the physical layer is bit by bit delivery as captured by this figure. So we want to move data in the form of bits between two neighboring nodes over a link. These nodes could be hosts, routers or switches. In case of hosts, these are typically general purpose computers where some portion of the functionality is implemented in software and some in hardware. But if it were routers and switches, a lot of the functionality is implemented in hardware for performance reasons, for example, high speed. To achieve bit by bit delivery, we need to tackle the following. So I'm going to cover the following concepts as part of the file layer. First, we will look at the components that make up file layer. What are these? Write a node and a link. Next, we will look at some theory behind file layer. Spectrum of signals. What is the maximum data rate you can get out of a link, so on and so forth. Next, we will look at data transformation, basically how to convert bits into signals. And in encoding, we will cover a few popular data transformation techniques, for example, like the ones that are used in Ethernet. So we need to cover all these to understand the operation of the file layer. But in this video, I'm going to look at just this aspect, components. Within components, here is the outline. First, we will look at the internals of a node, specifically a host. Then we will look at uh, the characteristics of a link and also the different types of links. Moving on to host internals. Assuming the node is a computer, let's see how it looks inside. Now, looking at this figure, I know you have this urge to open up your computer. By all means, go ahead. But if anything goes wrong, I'm not to blame. So in this figure, what is of interest to us is this area. This is where the network adapters go. This is an example of an Ethernet adapter and this is a wireless adapter. So you plug them in into these slots. So if you didn't open the computer, what you will see is an Ethernet jack through which you plug in Ethernet or an antenna sticking out. So that's hardware. In terms of software, most of the applications like email, web, or uh, file transfer protocols, these are implemented at the user space as processes. So this is where they are implemented. And the actual protocols as such are implemented at the kernel space. So this in turn is organized in this fashion where the socket layer acts as an interface between the application processes and the protocol. Finally, the data arrives at the interface layer, which includes the device drivers. For example, Ethernet driver or Wi-Fi driver and these drivers put the data onto the physical media. So if you have done a course on computer architecture, you would have already seen this uh, block diagram. What is of relevant to us here is the network adapter. We have already seen pictures of the Ethernet adapter or the Wi-Fi adapter. This is a piece of hardware. Often this implements a processor as well. The data as such resides in the memory and when you want to transfer this data over a link, it has to be moved into the network adapter. And similarly, when you are receiving data from a link, you want to move the data back into the memory. There are two ways to move the data. One is called the direct memory access. In this case, the adapter directly reads and writes into the host memory. Another is programmed input output. In this case, the CPU plays a role. In other words, it is responsible for moving the data between the adapter and the memory. Moving on to links, another important component at the physical layer. We have already seen many of these links. That Ethernet cable that you plug in to the computer is an example of twisted pair. The cricket matches that you watch on cable TV is thanks to coaxial cable. So cable TV uses these cables. 
and that thing in the pocket that you can't live without makes use of wireless. So a link is nothing but a physical medium that propagates signals and signals are nothing but electromagnetic waves. Now when I mention a wave, your physics background should flash this equation in your head where the speed of light in the medium is given as the product of the frequency and wavelength of the wave. Typically you are aware of this number, this is the speed of light in vacuum or free space but typically in some of the copper wires or this coaxial cable the speed of light is lot lesser ranging from 2 into 10 to the power of 8 to 3 into 10 to the power of 8. For example in coaxial cable it's only about 60 percent of the speed of light in vacuum. So these physical media unfortunately are not very perfect. They tend to do things to the signals which you wish rather they didn't. So a signal can often be thought of as a summation of electromagnetic waves of different frequencies and as the signals propagate through a media they experience many things one of which is attenuation. So basically as the signal propagates it loses energy over distance and this is expressed in decibels per kilometer. So first let's see what I mean by decibels. So this is basically the ratio between two power quantities expressed in a logarithmic scale. So 10 log 10 P1 by P2. So if I say 3 decibels that means 3 is equal to 10 log 10 P1 by P2 which implies P1 by P2 is 10 to the power of 0.3 which is roughly equal to 2. In other words the power reduced by half after 100 meters that means it suffered a 3 dB loss after 100 meters. So another thing to note here is that the different frequencies of the electromagnetic waves experience different amount of loss. So often some frequencies are fully attenuated leading to what is called a link bandwidth. So this basically captures the range of frequencies that suffer little attenuation. Another thing the signals can experience is what is called delay distortion. This happens because the different frequencies propagate at different speeds. So what this basically means is they do not arrive at the receiver at the same time. These media can also experience noise. So for example thermal noise could be due to random motion of electrons within the media itself. And they can also experience crosstalk because of uh, interference from edges in transmission. So this figure will show you why crosstalk can happen. As you can see multiple strands of wires are packed within the same cable and transmission in this wire could interfere with transmissions in this wire. So the end result of all this is the received signal can be quite distorted. Let me show an example. Suppose you were to send this particular square waveform through a medium, what you will receive is represented by this. As you can see, it is very squiggly because of the noise and the attenuation as well as delay distortion widens the particular pulse. So this is a pulse which got widened because of the attenuation as well as the delay distortion.